It's a class. It's a classic hip hop record. What other, oh, yeah, what other rap record has this many dope MCs on it? Oh my gosh, it's a classic. Another wake up show. Wake up show. Classic. Uh oh, oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something on the radio. Uh oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something on the radio. Uh oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something on the radio. Uh oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something on the radio. Uh oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something on the radio. Uh oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something on the radio. Uh oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something on the radio. Uh oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something on the radio. Uh oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something on the radio. Uh oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something on the radio. Uh oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something on the radio. Uh oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something on the radio. Uh oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something on the radio. Uh oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little I could just see him on the one and two side. My blood and crew pour the rum, 92.3. Number one in the slum, representing DJs. Sweep the whole seat, police the most. What a collaboration. See, I'm cold, so no pork, just knowledge, and I'm born once more. It's the beat that plus the street deep in the 94. Hip hop's last pop hits forth in existence. The 92.3 megahertz will exert radio waves to slaves for a phenomenal distance. Electrons oh, so you can hear some slum literature, consider it will numb your eardrum, kid. You're sleeping like a ladder day. Saint for swaying King Tech will wake you up on Saturday. Quick to get your fix to the mix and then them ghosts went. Uh, in your sleep I slap you with the lethal doses okay, of medicine. I'm gonna shout it now. I got we got we got a shout out. Key check your quicks better than your last fix. Good morning, my people. <clears throat> What's up, my people? Welcome to the road to a million. Before he jumps on his second plane, everybody say safe travels to Steven as he heads to Guam. This military man is doing the most. I mean, that's our brother on the road to a million. Safe travel, Steven. Enjoy Guam. And we appreciate your service. And uh, get there safely. Get back safely. And uh, come on back and let's get paid. You and I got a lot to do. You know this. I know this. Let's make it happen. Safe travels, my brother. What's up, Peaches? What's up? And good Friday to everyone. I like that. Marlon's in the house. He's literally in the house. Yesterday was his birthday, so I don't know if he's hung over or not. No, his birthday was two days ago. Two days ago, so maybe. That's worn off. Uh, <laughs> worn off. <laughs> oh, Marlon says the birthday party has worn off, so he's uh, he's back in the saddle. He doesn't look that hungover, so I guess I guess we're good. What's up, my people? This is the road to a million. We're having fun because we are getting ready to launch the beta test next week, and I'm going to give you like a scorecard. I'm going to show you guys the scorecard. The beta test of M3 Millionaire, our exciting new millionaire maker, king maker program that's going to take people's real estate businesses from zero to a million as fast as it's ever happened before. I'm just so excited about the way we, this thing's gonna go. I got a, a, several of you guys in the beta test group and I really appreciate you. Um, those of you who, who've talked about getting in the beta test group, if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it like pronto because we launch on Monday. So anyway, the the, the beautiful part of it is I have this is this is the full blown course of things that I sort of drip on you guys every day. Every everything, pretty much everything I teach is incorporated is part of that bigger platform, that bigger the, the full blown course, which is like kind of like. If I'm, if I'm spoon feeding you guys right now, that course is like dumping a bucket on your head. It's like that. It's, uh, it's, it's everything. It's, uh, it's how to build a real estate business. Um, and so we're going to have fun beta testing it with the, with the first folks. And then we're rolling it out. We're going national, ladies and gentlemen. We're taking it to the moon. What do you think about that? And then you guys are helping make it happen. I appreciate you so much. So what we've been doing lately is I've been pulling little components out of it. And, and trying to help you get to um, get to some of the principles that that you launched your super successful real estate practice uh, under. And yesterday we talked about uh, yesterday we talked about some of the things uh, in the mastery section. And I'm going to stay with that mastery theme because the three M's, the M three, the three M's and M three are mindset, marketing, and mastery. And mastery is the, the, the mastery of salesmanship, the mastery of words, the mastery of crafting your words and your ideas and the power of influence and the things that you do that make people move, the things that you do that make people make a move that maybe this morning they didn't even know they were going to make. It makes people decide to do things that they didn't even know 100% they were ready to do. It's not 
it's, it's not helping people, uh, it's not making people do something that's not on their agenda. It's making people take action because of the way you frame what's about to happen as a result of that action. Does that make sense? You see, there might be somebody who's, who's got ideas swirling in their head about buying their next home, but they, they, they haven't heard the things or haven't been convinced that they are uh, particularly ready. And they are unsure of themselves. And they are unsure. What's up, T and Tam? T and Tam jumped in at the same time. Latanya, hello. Um, people, most people are not quite sure of themselves. Most people need assurance. And that was part of that was one of the things we 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 talked about yesterday. Was we talked about reassuring people after you've after you've sold to them, or after you've convinced them, or after you've taught them what they need to do and answered all their questions. Hey, Reynaldo, what's up, my brother? Um, and so part of mastery is getting someone to arrive at a conclusion and taking, and taking massive action behind that conclusion. The problem is where people get stuck is most salespeople don't know how to get somebody from stuck on a fence to, to head first in the, into the neighbor's yard. <laughs> That's kind of a good analogy, I think. Uh, most people are sitting on a fence. They want to buy that next home. They want to sell that old home. They want to buy their first home. They want to step up and invest. They want to buy their first apartment complex. They, they want to quit their job and, and jump into real estate. They want to start that business. Many, 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 most, most, most people are sitting on some kind of fence. Think about your life. Stacy. good morning. Are you sitting on a fence somewhere? Are you sitting on some kind of fence? Are you trying to decide if massive action in the real estate business is what you should take? Are you trying to decide if, hmm, should I make that move and buy my first home? Are you trying to decide if, is it time for me to, to start investing? Are you trying to decide, hmm, do I leave this brokerage and join DC and EXP? You're on a fence. And see, the difference between a, a salesperson, an average salesperson, and a master of sales is that the master of sales can make someone make a decision and decide and go. And, a, and an average salesperson just goes there and commiserates with a person. Oh, okay, well, I'll be here when you're done thinking about it. A master gets people to get through the thought process, leads them through the thought process, and makes them take action today, today, not Next week, now let me think about it. No, I'm not letting you. let me get back to you. Get back to me. You know what happens when they get back to you? They don't get back to you. You know what happens when you let people off of that hook, that decision-making hook? Many times, they spiral out into oblivion and because they're afraid to make a decision. When you get adept at helping people make decisions that affect their lives positively, you are effectively a master of sales. That's what sales is. Sales is it's, it's helping convince someone to take an action. And then, of course, you, you many times you have to reassure that action. Many times you have to make them feel good. Um, many times you have to make them feel good about that decision. You know, you might have to reinforce it over and over and over again. Uh, that first home is scary as heck. You might have to remind them of how profitable it is and how intelligent it is to stop renting and start owning. They might be scared of it, but it's good for them. Isn't it interesting how somebody can know something is good for them, but still be scared about it? Think about it. So it's not so obvious all the time that, what are you, what are you stupid? You should, of course you should buy, right? No, you still get scared when you know something's good for you, don't you? You think about your own life. There have been times you've been afraid of things and they were good for you but you still were afraid to make the move to do, to do those things. That's where most of your clients and customers are. They're sitting on a fence somewhere. Yes, T, thank you. Are you sitting on a hashtag? Are you sitting on a fence somewhere? Exactly. Everybody you meet today is sitting on some kind of fence. Well, I won't say everybody. 90% are sitting on a fence. Now, mastery comes in when you are the best at knocking people off the fence, <laughs> push them off the fence and into the neighbor's yard. Um, that's like a good metaphor. Think about it. Let's get people off the fence. And, and there you go, Karen. People are living in fear and it's false evidence appearing real. Fear is just made up most of the time. 
I mean, there are plenty of things to, that are, that are uh, worthy of concern, but really most times you ought to just take a bunch of action to, to fix that problem. You know, fear is made up, but the problems aren't. Problems are real. But when you get good at attacking your problems and not avoiding those problems and not avoiding addressing those problems, life changes. Now, let's talk about, let's get into the, the mastery nuts and bolts. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some nuts and bolts about mastery. And uh, <laughs> Ronaldo is driving, ladies and gentlemen. Ronaldo is driving through the mountains in Central California. Ronaldo drives this big, massive, beautiful truck. And he tries to tune in to us every morning, but now he's, uh, his signal is spotty because he's driving through some remote mountainous region. Um, uh, well, hang in there, Ronaldo. Uh, we're, watch the recording if you, can't, if you can't hang in there. But thanks, I appreciate you, you uh, checking in. Um, all right, so let's talk about what masters can do, like literally. Here's what I want you to start doing and start thinking about. In order to, in order to, um, in order to be a, an influencer and affect your influencing ability, it, it's very helpful if you establish yourself as an authority. Okay. Now, a lot of real estate agents, a lot of salespeople don't do this. A lot of people just go jump into a situation and then when they don't get the sale or they don't get the deal or they don't get the client, they can't figure out, well, why don't they love me? Why don't they trust me? Why don't they do business with me? Many times it's because they're sitting on the fence about who you are. Uh-oh. Revelation, Marlon. You hear that? They're sitting on the fence about you. Holy cow. I didn't understand. They're sitting on the fence about me while they're sitting on the fence about selling their house. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here's the thing. Let's get the fence that they're sitting on about you out of the way. One less fence, right? What if you came in, when you walked in the front door, you were already a trusted authority? What if you were already a celebrity, a celebrity salesperson, a celebrity real estate agent? Let's just stay with real estate right now. What if you, what if they already knew who you were? What if they had already uh, vetted you? What if they had already decided before you walked in the door that you're the best person for the job? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Do you think, are you hearing me? Are you understanding me? They're sitting on the fence about you. How do I eliminate the fence about me before I walk in the door? I need to establish authority. So how do you establish authority, Darren? They don't know me. How do I do it? Hey, Lupe, good morning. Think, think about this. What if before I meet them, I give them, I deliver, I send, I, I give them some evidence that I am the best person for the job? What if I take the mystery out of who I am before I walk in the door? I, what if I establish some authority by sending them some information that maybe I published or put together. What if I did, what if I, I was just, it was just simple and today's my first day in real estate, Darren, and, and I don't know how to, I'm not an authority, <laughs> quite frankly, I'm kind of a peon. I'm a chump. I just woke up and got my real estate license this week. What do I do? Here's what you do. Take some information from the marketplace that you're in or that you're working or, and collect data, the neighborhood data, the for sale sold, expired, for sale by owners, and um, you name it. Anything, that, anything that's relevant to the price of their home, think about it. The things I just named all affect the price of their home, right? So collect all of that data. That's, a, that's available to all of us. Put that data together in a, in a pretty or organized or professional looking format. Morning, Chris. What's up, my brother? And package it Put your, your name and your pretty face at the top of the one sheet with some stats and some data. Make it look really slick and professional. Put it in a, eight, a nine by 12 envelope and send it to them before the meeting. Secret fireworks. Boom. I just knocked down the wall. There's some authoritative information that just came and 
you handed it to them ahead of time. Now they know who it is that's coming, right? All right, so, so try that. That, that's a, that makes you look like you know the marketplace, which obviously by collecting the information, you do, and that establishes you as somebody who's a professional in the arena, right? Okay, that's one way to knock down that fence they're sitting on about you. How about a second thing? What else can I do, dear? What else? How about third-party endorsements? Well, what is that? What are you talking about, Darren? What's a third-party endorsement? What if you know your neighborhood, right? You know the area. You know the the um, the lay of the land. Let's say, what if you went and got somebody who owned the local fill in the blank, owned the local grocery store, owned the local gas station, owned the local I don't know, you name it, car dealership. It doesn't even really matter, and you got them to endorse you. Oh my goodness, what? What if in the, oh my goodness, what if you, in a, if you wanted to take over and be the king or queen of, of this condominium complex down the street, and that was your target? What if you wanted to take over that complex and be the number one agent in that complex? What would I do? Darren, what would you do? I would go and find the property manager, HOA person, whatever, and I'd get, I'd figure out who that was, and I'd say, hey, Lisa, I, you, you're doing a great job with this apartment, I mean, with this condo complex. I want to be the real estate agent that sells these, these things for everybody. I want to be the number one agent in this, in this condo community. Would you consider endorsing me and just saying that, you know, you know me, you've met me, I'm a good, I'm a good guy? So i get her to endorse me. I'd send everybody in that condo complex that endorsement from the HOA property manager of that complex. And they'd go, oh my God, well, that's the real estate agent for this complex when I decide to sell. That's my guy. Oh my God, Marlon. Big fireworks. If you guys aren't catching something here, if you're just catching a cold today, then you got a problem. If that's all, if all you're catching is pneumonia, I'm here to tell you, you're missing something. I'm dropping some wisdom on you. This is science, Chris. I'm dropping some knowledge. Come on, somebody say preach, Rev, preach. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that is a gym. I mean, come on, come on. Who's giving you this? Who's giving you this for free, ladies and gentlemen? Am I handing you the keys to the Ferrari that's gonna take you down the road to a million? Did I just give you a set of keys? Come on, thank you for the love. <laughs> All you gotta do is ask for love, I guess. Thank you for the love, I appreciate that. I'm trying to, look, I'm trying to give you guys, thank you, Donisha. Uh, I'm trying to give you guys some practical stuff. You know, sometimes I look back and I go, I motivate, I motivate, I motivate, but then I don't, maybe I don't give as much practical stuff that you can plug in today. And so I decided, you know, I gotta, I gotta make sure I balance that out and give you some go do this today stuff. Those people that are gonna be in the M3 Millionaire course, we're gonna formulate this stuff and we're gonna actually push it out there with you for you it's going to be kind of a, a lot more done for you, and we're going to we're going to measure our results. So this is a, this is a lot of what we're going to get. Oh, I love it! Now, now, now you're talking, Marlon. Now you're talking. I like the church scene. <laughs> that's what we got going. That's what we got going. All right. So that's a great gym. Now let me give you one more because we got time for one more. I gave you a couple of good pearls. I gave you two. I'm gonna give you one more. You guys want one more? Can I handle one more? Do it. Marlon says one more is good. Let's do it. All right, the third party endorsements, that's, that's, that's an endorsement comes from, uh, I consider that like coming from a business, uh, a business figure, a business owner, an authority, a, uh, a property management company, the, 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 the property manager of the condo complex, uh, someone of authority. Okay, that's an endorsement. Next, I want you to get a few testimonials. That's different. Testimonial is different than an endorsement. An endorsement is somebody that's an authority in an area that says, hey, Darren Campbell, that's the best real estate agent I ever met. Oh, man, the love is flying now. Look out. Um, thank you, guys. Okay, but a, but a testimonial is an average person that has experienced your service. Whoa, now where, what, how, how hard is that to get? Go backwards. I don't care how long ago or how recent it was and get somebody you've done business with to give you a testimonial. Um, hey, Darren, I'm not good with video. I don't care. Get a testimonial in writing. 
Hey, Darren, I'm really good with video. Perfect. Take a video testimonial, send it to him. I don't care how the testimonial comes. The testimonial is what they call third party proof. It's called empirical proof. Third party proof is an uninterested third party. They don't have anything to do with this new client, but they're willing to say, hey, that Darren Campbell, he's the best real estate agent I've ever met. We had a great experience. Darren took care of us like nobody else. And you know what that does? That gets people off the fence about you because somebody else who didn't have to said that guy is black Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that term. I just, you know, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, but somebody says that guy is the best real estate agent I've ever met, or that guy handled our transaction very effectively, or that guy took care of us like nobody's business, or get better, or that guy sold our property for more money than any other real estate agent thought we could even list it for, or that guy got 21 listing, 21 offers on our property, and a lot of people didn't even think we could sell it anywhere close to that price, or that guy sold the property faster than we ever thought we, we, we could sell it, or that guy listed our property at an aggressive level, and with his tactics, he, he had us getting four offers on the first day. Or that guy went out to the marketplace and found out what we like. He went and found us a property that wasn't even for sale, and we bought it. And that's our new home. That guy, he just took care of us. That guy, he's the best. That guy, we love him. That guy, he, he, he's going to be our realtor for life. Any of these things, ladies and gentlemen, any of these things make another person go, well, I got the right real estate agent. When he gets here, let's be ready. Let's be ready to sign. I just got them off of the fence about me because somebody else had the experience that they want to have and so they endorse me before I get there and when I get there boom the fence is gone there is no fence about Darren Campbell anymore now I just got to get them off the fence about actually selling their property get rid of the barriers that keep you from doing business today that ladies and gentlemen is called mastery that is sales Mastery. And if you're not using these things in your business, then maybe, maybe the problem is you. Maybe the problem is not the marketplace. Maybe the problem is you're not converting people because your skills are limited. If your skills are limited, then maybe you don't know these things. Maybe you don't do these things prior to the transaction. Maybe you don't set the table before you walk in the door. You see, what I want to do is I want to have the listing pretty much buttoned up before I even walk in the front door. How can I do that, Darren? I pre-frame. I use these things I just told you. I just built authority before I walked in the front door. When I walk in the front door, I'm some kind of celebrity. When I walk in the front door, they're like, oh, we heard about you. What should we do? How do we sell this place? Instead of yeah, hey, well, what can you do for me, Mr. Real Estate Agent? I know a million real estate agents. I flip that around. When they open the door and they see it's me, they go, it's you. <laughs> it's actually you. You showed up. I didn't know. I thought maybe you were going to send one of your assistants or one of your army. It's really you. You're actually flattered that I showed up. Wow. 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 Game changer. They're flattered. They're honored that you graced them with your presence. Is that not powerful, ladies and gentlemen? That's the game changer. That changes everything. That takes away the resistance. No resistance. I walk in the door, there is no resistance. Everyone else, competition, gone, squashed them, killed them. They're dead. I'm the celebrity. I walk in the door. They're honored that I'm here. They don't want to waste my time. We better hurry up. We understand you're busy. You're busy. Um, okay, what do we need to do? What, what, and, what, and how much would you think? How much do you think we should sell it for? Oh, really? You think you think that's low enough? Okay, okay, okay. Well, and what do you want us to change? Is this, okay? All right, we'll change it. And, and, and will, will you? Will you? Can, can you get us started right away? Yeah, okay, maybe. I, I think we can handle it. If you do this and this and this, then uh, then then maybe we can get started sooner rather than later. Okay, okay, okay. We, 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 where, where do we sign? Ladies and gentlemen, that's mastery at its best. They're asking you, they're begging you to do your service for them. That's a game changer. Oh my goodness. Whew.
I know I get hyped up. I know I might yell a lot, but you guys, you got to try to plug this stuff in. You got to try to plug this into your daily routine. You got to try to make this your business. You got to, your business has to operate like this. Your business, sorry, your business has to be this way. This is the way you got to function. This is the way you set the table. This is the way you win. This is the way you go on nine appointments and you get seven listings. That's how, that's what your kill ratio ought to be. Come on. We got to raise our game. We got to be, we have to master this process so that we go on a bunch of appointments. We come home with a bunch of business. The typical real estate agent can't do it, won't do it, doesn't know this. You know this, you plug this into your business, you win. You don't lose listings. You do not lose listings. If you can get in the door, you know you're going to win the game. Do you understand? Do you guys believe me that if I tell you I have an appointment, that I have 99% assurance in my brain that the deal is mine? Do you believe me? Do you believe or you think I'm just blowing smoke? I want you guys to tell me, really, seriously. Do you believe that if I get an appointment, I can be 99% sure that I'm getting that list? If you don't believe me, say it. But if you believe me, I want you to say it as well because I'm here to tell you that's the way I feel when I get ready to go on an appointment. That's what a master should feel like. You need to master your craft so that if you get the appointment and they say, well, we're going to interview four agents. And I say, okay, well, you decide. You want to interview me first or you want to interview me last? Because I'm the, I'm the last real estate agent you're going to ever talk to. So you decide. You want me to go first or you want me to go last? If you haven't met those people and you really want to meet them and know what they're like, then interview me last. But if you want to stop wasting time, you interview me first. Your choice. I'll be the last real estate agent you talk to. Maybe ever. <laughs> I like that. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to do this. You got to become a master. You got to master your craft. You got to become somebody who can operate from a position of authority, walk in that front door, already revered. That's what Sales Master is all about. Come on, join me. Jump in the Ferrari. Let's go. Oh, my goodness. That, jump in the Ferrari with me. Let's go down the road to a million. This is the practical stuff. This is not just book stuff. This is not just fluff. This is real stuff. Let's plug this into your business. Let's take you down the road to a million. Let's get you there. I'm Darren Campbell. I'm your real estate mentor, and I'm going to see all of you at the top. Let's rock out. With spray, the host dose of fat mix. Baby dose running so Saturday nights open. Hopping on the 101 time scoping 92.3 degrees. Choking on chocolate. I never doubt smoking Prince Toe. Blows up from LA to a boat in a mouth. Yo, it's the wake up show. My genetic makeup take up 130 pounds of beef. The lyric shake up like January 17th. Crossover 16th. Them seeds is fast. Protect your neck and wear a bulletproof vest on your tops. Amateurs bad at your cornea. Cause you don't want to see California. See your arsenic spitting. North and it was great tech and Joe Quicks on the mix. Spinal meningitis ain't as stiff as the whip of brass cast out slash like this is cracking for the whips. Come equipped, you're losing your paraphernalia. I'm a hip hop apostle singing the gospel like my hell. Yes, Jackson, he's Saturday, nine until the break of dawn. Took cocaine on my tongue, you got crap and I rocked on. Rocked on, rocked on, rocked on, rocked on. Uh oh, oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something for the radio. Uh oh, I'm cooling with my niggas on the wake up show. Uh oh, we kick a little something for the radio. Saturday uh -oh. night, get live, set it off right, swing with my peeps, king. Check your pass the mic and turn the up till you get to speak the blow. The red sky is nine o'clock, time for the wake up show. To the break of your big overseas, doing what I say, say, cousin mom switch, wave my words, I wanna wanna see. Blotting out the mainstream. Do it right with your quakes on the mix. Late in the night, so soon, then, cause you don't no sleep. Moving in your deep alignment, two, four, three. It's 9 o'clock for you, 92.3 to be the beat begins to rock hip hop non stop. You know who got the rock. And they'll play on Saturdays. Check the sway, the set. Set your clocks for the unorthodox hip hop that drops 9 o'clock.